All right, art students, welcome back to another class. So this class, we're going to do more for shortening. Last video we did, we covered a lot more uh, perspective using the checkerboard and the squares. So this one we're going to do more perspective because nothing could make your picture stand out more than doing something for shortening. Did I say for shortening? Was I talking about perspective? Anyway, yeah, it's just perspective. Foreshortening and close up. You put the two together, it makes for a good picture. All right, let's start out by finding the meaning of foreshortening. I tried this last video, it didn't work because the computer was just tripping. Let's do it again. Computer, what is the meaning of foreshorten? The verb for shorten is usually defined as to reduce or distort parts of a represented object that are not parallel to the picture plane in order to convey the illusion of three-dimensional space as perceived by the human eye, often done according to the rules of perspective. For more, ask me to give you more definitions for foreshortening. All right, so there you go. So if you didn't really catch that, just rewind it and then play it back again. So now that you know what foreshortening is, or how to foreshorten, I'm going to actually show you. So this is what I was looking for. These two paper towel holders here paper towel rolls, and this one ball here. I'm going to show you about foreshortening. All right, now usually this, this will only go for the arms and the legs because the body is just made up of, there's made up of a couple more shapes that are more different than these. Let me slide this over. So I've showed this a number of times in my book. This is, this is these are the shapes that you're going to be using right here. Now, once you master these shapes and learn how to take these shapes and turn it, twist it, and do whatever, then you'll be a master at drawing. And these are just simple shapes. These shapes are just really, really, really simple. You have a bunch of, um, yeah, that shape. My brain is three sentences ahead. You have almost cones, triangles, half triangles. Squares, circles, ovals, rectangle. That's what I'm trying to say. Rectangles. This could be cones. So I'm going to show you foreshortening these shapes and then we'll put them together. I'm going to draw a picture, non foreshortened, and then foreshortened. And then this is the same thing. If you take these, if you take these, don't go too far because I need you. If you take these shapes right here and put them all together, you have your body. It'll be the same with a female, except the shapes are just a little more curvier. So let's work on that right now. As soon as I grab my ball and pull it back. And my chair is squeaking, so I may have to invest in a new chair. All right, so as I say, you have those shapes, mostly rectangles. A circle is going to stay a circle no matter how you change it. So this is going to represent the arm and the leg. So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw a... Um, Start out with arms. So you have an oval as well, which is the, or the egg shape, but just for the sake of, of saying so, let's just stick with an oval. Now you take the oval and you turn it around. Over is kind of like a fat, fat rectangle. So if I just kind of like blow this up and round that off, it's kind of the same thing. Somebody said in one comment that I was drawing too lightly and I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. That was my bad. I'm not going to draw light anymore. So, yeah, it's just if you take this and you put air in it, the sides are going to bulge. The sides are going to bulge out just like that, okay? So, but with the body, once you turn that and when you're looking at the top of it, it's going to take on this shape right here, more like this. All right, so that's kind of like the same thing here. So, once you learn these shapes... And you just master, you know, when you get bored, just, just draw shapes, just draw, just draw stuff and stick shapes to it. So if my pencil would stop falling off my table. All right. So let's start out with this. Let's start out with this shape. Let's take it as oval. Okay. This is, this is your torso. And I'm going to split that in half. I'm going to do my collarbone. I'm going to do my chest right here. Okay. We're going to stop there. So we take this here, take this ball. So we're going to put a circle right here and a circle right there. Those are going to be your delts, okay? End of your shoulders. So if you take this and stick it on sideways, it's going to look like that, okay? So 
and this is the arm this is just the arm like that and if you take another one since I'm going this way and you take that and you put it on it's gonna be the same thing so these are for you guys who are really beginners now what I like to do is I cut this little piece out right here because this is almost a cone you know, just think about think about an ice grab it think of an ice cream cone you know so when you put that there you have more of a almost a triangle going out because the arm is wider where's the camera wider here and it gets narrower as it gets to the wrist so if we do this and then chop it off right at the end or just right at the end you have an arm now when you take that and then you bring it forward or when you start to tilt it it's hard for me to do this in the camera you have foreshortening because you're taking this thing and you're turning it in a way where it looks a lot shorter than it is and that's just foreshortening so you can you can you, you can foreshorten the top of the body the arms the legs whatever any kind of um shape you can take it and foreshorten it except for a circle a circle is just it's just there it's not going anywhere so if i took this arm and i wanted to not have it like that and i wanted to have it out just coming at me a little bit more what you have are your two circles i always say that the two circles you have your front circle and you have your back circle now when you take a cylinder and you start to turn it it's basically you this can be a rectangle perfect square perfect perfect square not perfect square perfect rectangle like that only when you start to turn it or if it starts to aiming at you think of this as like a barrel of a gun or something and it starts to aim at you you'll start to see this roundness come out now if you take something that's round and I sort of look for that yeah it would be better if I had something round and flat even if I had a quarter but I'm broke so you take something like this in the front of it if you're looking it down at it from the top from the very top it's gonna look like that so once you start moving it from the front from the top which is a circle it's going to turn more into let's see I'm not even going to shapes it's going to turn more into this oval shape so as I start leaning this down it's going to turn into that shape the same same roundness as the top is going to be the same roundness as the bottom now so I would say you have your top circle your front circle and your back circle now that all depends depends on how much this gun barrel let's stick with that is aiming at you determines how round the front is going to be okay so if you have a, a toilet paper empty toilet paper um, roll or a toilet paper roll that's a good it's a good practice just draw it draw it and as I say easier part is front circle and your back circle so if I do a circle here this is gonna be my front circle and it's gonna be my back circle you just line it up draw darker for the one girl that said she couldn't see like that and then because this is not glass it's not a glass tube it's not a hollow tube you erase the part that's in between the two lines so you end up with marker please you end up with this And now you're starting to do foreshortening. So if this was the arm, and he had one arm out, and he was bringing another arm in, so you're going to do, depending on how much that is, arm is going to be facing you, you're going to do your front circle and then your back circle. Your back circle is always going to be against this ball here. So this is this, and then you have your, this would be your bicep, tricep, the other one would be your forearm. So it's like this, this way. So I'm going to bring it towards you a little bit. So I'm going to do my front circle. How much do I want it to be aiming at me? So let's just say this much. So it's going to go back to here. And I'm going to put my back circle on that. Now you can see it's being foreshortened because it's coming at you more. So if I took another one and I put it maybe at a bend, it's hard with this camera. At a bend, you would have to see, am I going to see the front circle and the back circle, or is it going to be more a rectangular shape, or am I going to see just a little bit of it? 
So let's just say I'm going to bend. It's going to be crooked because this is in the way. I'm going to bend it down, which the arm doesn't won't really do that. So we're going to have my back circle. Now, a lot of times in drawing, they'll give you the little ball here, and you can actually put it on, which is, is if you're really, really new to drawing, it's really good to do that. So you have this, which is your delt. You have this. You have the other ball here, which it connects to. And then you can have the other part of the arm connects to that ball. I mean, when you're when you're really a beginner at that, but as time goes on and you get used to drawing the shapes, you don't have to draw that second ball. I always do this one because this part of the arm is going to ride up that ball. It's going to ride all around that ball. So let's just say this. Here's going to be my front circle, and it's going to be my back circle. Now the closer, the closer you get, or the closer. The front circle gets to you the bigger it's going to be so let's just say this let's do this okay you've got that down I mean my front circle my back circle so that's just connected to this other one without the ball you know sometimes that ball gets in the way or that circle gets in the way if you're drawing people this one's going to stay because you're going to use the shape you're going to use that shape because that is the shape of your delts. Your collarbone comes up and it goes over your delts. And wherever this back circle is, that's how your chest is shaped. Your delt is shaped. It's going to come around like that. And your arm is going to tuck under there. So you always keep that ball there. This one you really don't need. As I was saying. So. Let's say I have my back circle. This is in a way again. And my front circle. So if I'm going to do something that's really closer, I'm going to have my front circle and my back circle right there. Draw it a little darker. I think in that video I was deliberately drawing um, light. So you have that. So you have this. Remember, whatever the, the roundness of the back. It's the same roundness of the front. So that, that. So that's coming like right at you or going away. If it was a bullet speeding towards somebody, then it's going away. If it's something, a stick or, or whatever coming at you, then it's coming to you. So if I did this, if I took the, let's make this a little bigger. Front circle, going to the back circle. This one is bigger, that one's a little smaller, but then I'm gonna connect the other one. So I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna make this even bigger. It's gonna go back to that back circle. Now the only problem is the more of the circle you see, the shorter it's gonna be. So straight across, you're starting to see the opening of that, that circle, which is an oval right now. So it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter talking about this side getting shorter and shorter and shorter so the more circle you see facing you the shorter this is going to get and that's something you're going to have to remember when you start doing this so that is going to be the same thing with the legs as well the only thing that you would have to worry about is getting the curves for example since i'm staying at the book uh look at the curves of the arm once you get those curves and the muscles in but in the beginning, do not try to do muscles. If you're if you're just starting out, you just want the shapes. You don't want the muscles. Let me see if I can find that picture again. It's in the back. All right. So this is a nice picture. He's not like overly muscularized. It just has the nice cuts in there. And that's all you need in the beginning. Don't try to... I'm going to make his muscles jump out so much that he's going to have all these extra muscles. Because when you really don't know where the muscle connects, it, it looks bad. It looks really bad. I know you can't see that. He's drawing in his book. Yes, my book. I say that. If you own a drawing book, draw in it. Put some shadow, you know, in it. Or if you buy any of my books, the, these books are good for, for it being erasable. And then you can, you know, you can just... Starts if you're going to draw something from the book, say okay, how would the shadow look? And then say okay, I don't like that. Let me erase this and put the shadow somewhere else. I would use a regular pencil. I wouldn't use a red pencil. 
because regular pencils erase a little easier and you can erase it and then you can come back I don't have a regular pencil getting off this getting off the topic but yeah it's just easy to do and then you can have you know in, in any of the positions that you might see in this book just like my other books is this upside down it is upside down just like any of my other books I have a lot of drawings that you can you can actually color and these are just the thumbnails for the lessons from my YouTube channel so I think this is maybe like I don't even want to say the first year first whatever I did all these drawings except for these these are the poses just regular action poses but again you can do your shadow it just it just helps out don't be afraid to draw in the book it's your book I know in school they were like never draw in the book but you paid for this book it's your book you own it you draw in it so okay what was I saying okay. five four three two one all right I was saying the closer the more of this the opening that you see the closer it's going to get to you the closer it's going to be to you and the shorter it's going to be uh, that was the big thing the shorter it's going to be so let me move all some of this stuff out here and let me do this and it's really easy once you start doing it as I said just take a take an oval shape and then just draw your circle draw your circle and then do some cylinders going in whatever direction you choose have some more open than the others like this so this would be the same remember however round this is I know it's a better way to say that this is going to be equally round so you can't have this more narrow like an oval and this all the way round because it, it throws it off somehow some way it just throws it off okay so let me let me slide back up I'm pushing myself over I don't know why maybe I should adjust the camera pull the camera over because this is the junky part of my desk right here well the whole desk is junky so <laughs> uh yeah all right so let's do this as I say the more it turns the bigger you want it to be the closer but the one thing is let's do this back circle again when you start to do foreshortening and you have like these two let's say you have these two stuck together when you start turning it where's the camera where's the camera it's opposite it's weird you're going to lose one you're going to see this one more and you're going to lose a lot of that one so if i turn this like where it's really aimed at you you you've lost this whole red piece here so that's something else to think about when you start drawing so this is one reason why and i'm kind of jumping ahead if i'm drawing someone say aiming a gun or has his fist at you I will draw that fist first in the position where I want it. You've got the pencil in your hand. And see, this is kind of like jumping ahead. So this is going to be that fist right there. That's where I want it. So now I'm going to try to fit the two cylinders behind that. So I'm, got, I'm going to have my one here because some of it is going to be covered up. This is going to be say, like where the, where the front circle is going to be. And this is where the back circle is going to be like that. So then we're going to have the other one behind here. So the circle, which you're not going to see, is going to be right up, butted up against that. And it's going to be right back there. So if I did a fist, but of course, the closer it's going to be, the more of a cone it's going to take because it's going to be wider here. I made that like a better forced example. It's going to be wider at the top and more narrower at the bottom. It's a good force. I don't know why I can't focus on my camera. I think it's moving. So if I did this, it would be wider here and more narrower back there. It's not barely, but it is. So if I did a fist, we had the fist turned the wrong way. And then I'm going to have... Of course, this, this front circle is going to be hidden here. And then the back circle is going to be right there. And that's a bad, really bad drawing. Yeah. So, just understand that. 
the closer you have something, it's going to block off the rest. So like this is my fist. So this is my fist. And I'm going to turn this fist towards you. This is getting shorter. And a lot of this is being obscured by that fist. So if I have it like really, really at you, where's my camera again? You're going to lose a lot of that shape. So a lot of times if you have a hand or fist, let's say here, and that's just, that's just the shape here. That's just, your, let's just say a box and it's going back in perspective. That's your fist. Okay. You can do your fingers and then you can do your thumb like that. You have a quick box fist. So again, the, because a lot of the arm is obscured, most times you'll just have this half circle right there. Then you will have another half circle for your bicep, tricep, your bicep and tricep. Then you will have that circle for your delt, which comes down to your chest. And that thumb is wrong. The thumb should have been inside. I should have drew it that way. But you understand shapes. It's just easy. You have your knuckles. You have your fingers coming out more. And then in. And I did it wrong again. Should have been on the inside, not the outside. I'm dyslexic today. So again, shapes, shapes, shapes. All right, so let's do the legs real quick. And then I'm going, I'm going to move on to doing um, a perspective, a uh, foreshortened drawing. So you already have this. You already know this. All my videos are try to teach you that so that's that's like the ground rule right there that one so if you add a, just a rectangle at the bottom of this that takes the place of your hips and if you do the house who doesn't know how to do the upside down house that's your that's your hips this is your waist waist and hips yeah so we're using this shape right here which is this home plate for baseball players or the upside down house which is just not straight up and down it curves in so same thing applies to your legs i don't know why i drew that so big this i usually do this because of the knee because uh toys have this and some people will say oh draw the ball right here i don't do that and then that right there and of course i would throw my leg up there but i can't because you know the, the thigh is fat and it narrows in the knee and then you have your fat calves and it narrows in the ankles and the foot is just kind of half a triangle. Okay, so same thing applies. If I take this and I lift it up, well, we're gonna we're gonna eliminate this part for now. So if I take this other leg and I lift it up to where I can see the front circle, I'm gonna go and see the back circle. It's gonna be the same amount of curve right here as it is right there. So if I lift that leg up even more. I'm just going to keep drawing some more hip waist, hips, hips. I get those so messed up. So I'm going to bring that front circle out up even more. See how low, how low it is. So I'm going to bring that front circle up even more. And then I'm going to put my back circle right here. So you, of course, you know, your circle fits here because your shape of the hips or that part is like this. So, you know, that curve, you're going to get that circle in there always. So you want to bring that up and then here. So that makes this shorter and that tells you that you're lifting the leg up even more. So if I do it again and just have the front circle right here and it can cover up that back circle or you can see just a little bit of the back circle back here. That will tell you that that thigh is so high, basically he's sitting down. If this was a chair, his thigh is going to be right there. So now if you add that front one, most times if you sit down, this is still going to be that rectangle shape. So right here, let's say I put a circle here for my knee, wherever my knee is going to go. Because your, your sideways, basically the same thing, it's fat and it narrows out right there. 
you know, it's not going to be straight. It, it actually narrows out. But for the sake of learning, we're going to keep it fat like that. So I'm going to put my knee right here because usually your back circle is always going to be wider or more open, bigger than your front circle. That's just the way the eyes are, are shaped. So we have this back circle. So I'm going to, I'm going to make my front circle smaller. So it's best to keep the thigh as a cone. Get it narrow because you already had the shape just by those, just by these shapes, you already pretty much have the shape of the legs without trying to draw muscles. And I'll just kind of give it a little more puffiness to it to round it off. And then here's my knee and then this, and then that, and then you have the shape of, of a leg without having to try to stress over the muscles. It's shapely, it's good enough. So as I was saying, back circle is always gonna be smaller than the front circle right there. So if I do another cone, or another rectangle right here, which is gonna be a cone, I always use cones for the legs, especially the legs. It's gonna be like that. This is straight up and down like that. And then the foot here, which is that half of triangle, Chop it off at the top. So half a triangle. So that's somebody sitting down from this back circle, which is going to be there. Remember that shape. If your hips are determined by the legs, how much your leg comes up, or this part in here is determined. So we have this. Now I can put that front circle over here, which will bring that leg, which means that leg is coming in this direction. I can put that front circle over here, which means that leg is going in that direction because you see this thigh, or I can put it at the top. I can take it off at the top. If you take it off, then you're going to have to draw your lines. Or I could just put it in the middle, just like he's sitting down and then put that other leg right there. So we have a guy that's sitting down or a character or a body that's sitting down. So if I ink this, it would be like this. Here's my back circle. Here's my front circle. Here is my, um, I guess that's a shin. And that's the foot. So again, we have this back circle. Now you see how this one is over to the side. You see more of the inner. So I'm going to put this right in the middle because nobody sits, you know, perfectly. You usually have one leg this way, one leg that way. It's just, just, just how we sit. So I'm going to put this in the middle. So you have your front circle and your back circle. So this is going to be kind of like equal all the way around. And then I will put this here and that other leg. So that gives it a little more balance, a little more realist, realism because the person is, one leg is out, one leg is straight. And then you have your hips. And then of course you just put your rectangle there. You put your oval there. And then your arms could come down which is a, um, again with the cylinder. You have his resting on his, his um, thigh. Cylinder, 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 go up, hands are down. Maybe he's nervous. So once you master those shapes, the, 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 just the foreshortening, turning the foreshortening, my ball ran away. I don't think I'm gonna need it again. Then you're in the house, and of course, later on, you understand that you round it off because you have your calves right there just to give it more shape. And that's the same thing I said. If you take this and you blow some air into it, it'll bulge out at the sides and come back. And then you have that shape without needing to have all the muscles. So let me take a quick second and make sure I showed you guys everything that I wanted to show you as far as foreshortening. I already told you the the this part when you lean it forward it's going to be more when you look at it from the top it's going to be more like that this is your head this is your nose this is your ears it's going to be have this more shape there and it's going to have the two two circles on the end so all right so let's do this um picture that i was going to do <clears throat> So I'm going to draw this it's action pose. It's going to be coming right at you. But if first, I'm going to draw it as if it's not foreshortened. It's going to be straight up and down. So I have my oval always. I always start out with my oval. My head goes in either last or next to last, depending on the position. So center line, uh, 
um, collarbone, except, well, let's just do the collarbone. Show you guys how, how I always thought the chest is going to be in the middle and your stomach is going to be that, that little tunnel or that mountain right here. So you're going to have your waist. It's not going to come off of this because this is, this is where your abs are. Your waist, so that's going to be your, um, that shape, my brain. And then you have your upside down house. This is how I start all my drawings, and then from that, well, not all of them, but majority of them, from that, then I'll twist it and turn it a little bit to, to do what it needs to be done. So as I say, you're not going to bring that waist up against this because this is the inner part of your abs. It comes down here, and you have the center line, and you already have you know the makings of your abs right there. You didn't have to draw muscles. All right, so we're going to do this. This leg is definitely going to come up, so we're going to have a back circle. And remember, I'm drawing this, I'm drawing this picture and then I'm going to foreshorten it. So this is going to be here. So I'm going to put my front circle here. And then I'm going to put my other cylinder here. I'll make it a little longer. And then my foot is going to be kind of pointed down. So now I'm going to do the leg. The leg is going to be the cylinder. Remember, this is going to be wider than this. Here's my knee, and then here's my other cylinder. I'm giving it a little more shape than I did in the um, previous examples. And then that foot is going to be done. So this person is going to be flying. He's going to be like, actually, when I foreshorten him, he's going to be coming to you. So from here, as I said, we have our delt. And then, so this arm is going to go up. So this collarbone is going to go up too because the, this connects to that, which connects to your arm. So whatever, however you lift your arm, this is going to follow or this is going to determine how your arm is going to be lifted. So we're going to go up like here. So it's going to be there at the bottom. Then we're going to have the arm here or cylinder here. And then another cylinder right here. And then just put a ball for the fist. V comes up to the top of this. There's my neck. And then there's my head. <clears throat> He's going to be looking up, so I'm going to give an indication. The same way I did this, indication of the chin. Because he's looking up, and which means you would just have to put the eyes of more of a curve as well. So this arm is going to go back. This arm, the shoulder is going to go back a little bit. So I'm going to lift this collarbone up and still have my circle. So I am going to need my ball, which just ran completely away. All right, so now this is this, right? This arm is going to be in the back of it. Let me draw it first. So you're not going to see too much of that arm because it's going to be behind that ball. So that's all you're going to see. And then this other part of the arm of this, the form is going to come down like that. I'm going to adjust this a little bit, but this is just a quick rough sketch. And here's my hand right there. So you have this, you have this. So when I turn it, I can't do my camera. You see, you're just going to see a little bit. It's going to be on this side. Camera, camera. It's like being dyslexic. It's like, yeah, you're going to see just a little bit of that part coming down. And where's my purple? And then you're going to see this part. Get it back in focus like that. So that's how that arm is going. It's going back. It's almost like he's running. And the arm, you know, the arm, when you run, your arm goes this way. So this is that. Just by using these shapes, you have that. And this is still going back because this is going back. Let me use this. Because this is going back, you're going to see the circles like that. If it was coming forward, you would see the other way around. This would, it would be more like this. And then this circle would be there. And that tells you if something's going forward or back by the opening. Can you see in the opening of it? All right. So with this, I'm going to lean this down because we're so used to drawing pictures um, straight up and down. When we first draw, we tend to draw uh, what we see. And usually we'll have the guy standing up or the girl standing up without too much bending. Because it's hard for us to understand how to draw the character bending. So... 
let me foreshorten this. Let's see if I keep this on camera and foreshorten this. So <clears throat> what we have, we're going to lean him forward. So we take this and remember what I say, when you're seeing it straight down, it's going to have this, this look right here. But I'm not going to have it too much straight, but it's going to be straight a little bit. So it's going to be like this, and I'm going to tilt him. So we're going to have like that. Now, if I didn't have it straight up and down, you would see some of this. So that's kind of like doing this. It's kind of like, okay, I'm going to have it straight up and down. It's like this. So when I lean this forward, you'll see the opening, and then you'll see less of this same thing with the cylinder except it's not round so we're going to have it like this i'm going to angle it so when you want action you don't want something you want to try to give it more of an angle like if you have a car i don't have my car let's just use this let's just say if this is a car and it's coming toward you it's kind of boring so if you can angle it a little bit and then turn it give it a little more angle to it it's nice. It, like whenever you see Star Trek or something with a spaceship flying, it never flies straight unless it's a cargo ship. But if it's a, like a, a fighter or something, they always come at you like that angle to the side like that because it just it just makes it look cooler. So we have the torso and because this is so big, it's going to cover up all of this stuff. Because if you're looking from the side, if I'm drawing this guy from the side, I'm drawing the body from the side. This tucks in like that. So you have your chest, your arm, this is gonna be your stomach, this is gonna be your hips, your pelvis, hips, your pelvis, and then your legs are gonna be like this. And then your buttocks. So if you drop in a line straight down, you see how much this tucks in? So you won't see that when you bend a person forward. I've got the big guy right here. I'm going to pull him out uh, later. So we have this, and see, this is the type. This is the time where I may put the head in early because I want to just just to see where the head is going to go. So we have this. Then we're going to have the two circles. We're going to have the one because this one is going to go back. So underneath that neck, you're going to have the collarbone. So this one's going to go more up, and then that ball is going to be right here. So if you take your arm and you put it directly over your head, your delt, which is this, is going to be really touching your ear depending on how much uh, you bring that up. So this is always going to be like on the end of that ball. Okay, so it's going to have that roundness and that arm is going to fit into that roundness. So remember what I said, or did I even say it? I did say it. Let me get the example back if I can remember where it's at. It is from your delt, it's going to be it's going to come right into the chest. It's going to come right into the chest. So you have this outer part, which is up here, and then you have the lower part, but it all comes back to the chest. So when you when you when you put your arm up, your chest is going to be like this. Your chest is naturally shaped like this. But when you put that arm up, and since this is connected, you're going to pull, it's going to pull this. This is going to pull that chest and it's going to look like that and your arm tucks up under here which means you're going to see your lat your lats right up under there whereas you won't see it because your chest takes up more room you see a little bit of your lats but if this gets narrow like this you'll see more of your lats so we're going to put them i'm going to i'm going to do this later because i'm going to do something with the fist and it's going to cover up so because the chest like this is bulky and as I said I'm, I'm jumping the gun I should have did this this is gonna be like this but because that chest is bulky like this it sticks out you're not gonna see underneath of it so I like to keep this as one piece so it's kind of like the football pads this which goes into the chest it separates right here comes out and it's gonna go up into this okay so we have that so as you look up this collarbone if you're straight in front of you this collarbone is going to be right here like on top of the ball unless you lift the collarbone up so as you look up that collarbone because this ball right here as a circle the collarbone is right here and if you look it's going to stop right in the center of that so if you look up at it 
you have this, you have your head, you have your the ball uh, dealt, you have your collarbone. It's going to be right here in the center of that ball because there are three parts to it. Is it one, two, three muscles that, that make up your delt like that. And that's kind of like in the center. All right, so we have that. Now I'm going to do that back arm. So remember, this is he's leaning forward. So you're just seeing the top of this collarbone. You're not going to see the bottom of that. This is going to go back and you're going to have that arm. You're only going to see uh, a little bit of that arm because he is still going, he's still going backwards. You might see a little bit more than you do here. Let me pull this back over. So that's just this. Let me get a blue. That's just that cylinder being foreshortened. And it's going to go back because it's going back in, in space. So this is just that cylinder right there going back. And then you have this other cylinder that's going to be, that is going to be, what's the word? It's going to be blocked. You're going to, you're going to be blocked. How do I have this? It's like this going back camera, camera. And then you're going to, it's going to be blocked. All this part is going to be blocked off because this is in front of that. And that's another part about foreshortening, putting stuff in front of stuff. So, you have this going back here. And just for now, I'm just going to do cylinder like that. So, for this one, well, let's do, because you can't see that, I'm going to work on this last because this is going to be more of a complicated. So, because you can't see any of this, what you will see is the leg. You'll see that leg sticking out because this leg is bent up. It's almost like he's sitting down. Move out the way. So what you're going to do, like I said, you're not going to see any of that unless he has more of a lean, then you will see a little bit of that and maybe some of the crotch, and, but you won't see the hips. But we're not leaning him that much. And I'll say, we're leaning him a lot. We're not leaning him where you can see. I'll pull out the big guy later, try to get that pose. So that, 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 <clears throat> that leg is going to come out like this. I'm going to do a, a cylinder and then shape it up a little bit. So we have that, this coming down because there's a knee right here. And then this leg, you're just gonna see a little tiny bit of that. So we have this and let me pencil this off so you guys can see it a little bit more. So that's the shape of the chest. So you're gonna, because the chest comes in, you're gonna have this delt, all that part because the chest is coming in. And you're going to see just a little part of the leg because remember that leg is fat, <clears throat> that thigh is fat right here. So if that line comes straight down, <clears throat> the line comes straight down, you're not going to see this part and you're not going to see that part. You're not going to see all of that. You're just going to see this fat part right here, which is this right there. So now, remember what I was saying, if something is coming right at you, this is coming at you again with the camera. And then I put this hand, which represents a fist. You see how much that covered that up? So you won't see really, depending on how much is coming at you, you won't see any of that arm unless I tilt it a little bit more. And if I put the other part of the arm on there, camera, 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 I'm having so much trouble focusing that thing. You won't see too much of the other part of the red arm, depending on how much you have it so because this is right there in your face i will draw the fist first if i'm doing something like this i will draw my fist first and then whatever space <clears throat> i have left if i can see it then you see part of the arm so but this is also it also determines like if i drew the fist up here let's just say this is the fist get it right okay fist is here This is my thumb on the inside, and then I will have this. You're not going to have that that like this because it's it's so close. You're just going to have this part of the circle right there, and then you're going to have the other part of the circle right here, the other part of the arm right there, which which is going to go into your delt, delt yes, like that. That is, it all determines on how where you want to put the fist. So, but I want to put that fist kind of like right there, just like right there. So this is my head. That's another reason why I put the head there. 
So I'm gonna put the fist like right here. It's gonna be like in your face. Turn that fist, draw a fist. You've been having fist problems all day. So you see how much that, that covered up everything? And But I do want something to be shown. I want a little bit to be shown. Now, if you draw a punch, you, you usually, most times, you're going to have just a little bit of bend in your arm. Nobody's going to have like a rigid straight, you know, doing a punch. You have just a little bit of bend. So that means that elbow is going to go out this way. So if I do my fist, I'm going to make my fist just a little smaller, but big enough to be coming right at you. So you'll see some of that, maybe. And then the rest of the arm is going to go right here. So you'll see, it'll be like this. It'll kind of be like this coming at your camera, camera, camera. It's going to be kind of like that. You have a little bend in it. This is going to go out. This is going to come in. That depends on how much fish you want to see. But this is going to be right here. This is going to be your delt. So <clears throat> you will see a little bit of the bicep. And maybe this comes out there. So you have it like that. And then your fists like that. So my other fist is going to be here. So I've taken this and I foreshortened it. I've just kind of taken this and I've laid it down. So let me add some actual curve to that. Because if you go fast, if you're doing fast, you want to kind of bring everything in. And I'll give you an example of that. So if I throw a ball, like if you look at anime, you throw a ball, the ball is round. Now, if I throw that ball really fast, the ball is going to start taking on more of an oval shape. And if I throw it like really extremely bullet fast, it's going to be like that. So, so if you bring stuff in like his arm, I could have had his arm out here. That wouldn't show that he was like really going fast and I could have his leg out here. But if I bring his leg in just a little closer, try to keep everything tight. Like bring it in. That gives a little more indication of speed. I'm drawing the wrong line. Like that. Bring that in a little bit more. I say I can bring this fist in to be tighter. But I wanted you to, to know what was behind that fist. Because you have your fist. This is going to be your front circle. This is going to be your back circle. Then you're going to have the other one here going here. Your circle and circle going here and here. And your fist is connected to that. Hopefully you guys can see that. So. <clears throat> if I bring that fist in even more. Uh, and it depends on, you know, there's, there's a million little tweaks you can do with the fist. You can bring it. It gives it a little more indication of speed and power. And then I can probably just maybe show just, just a tad bit of the arm. And then the head, if I bring the head up like this, let's get rid of the head for now. This is the shoulders. If I bring the head up like that, it kind of slows him down a little bit. Do it a little darker, Brian. Do it a little dark. That kind of slows him down because his head is up almost like he's looking. But if I bring the head down into the body, that gives it a little more, a little more um, power, a little more speed, a little more daring. Because I'm bringing, I'm kind of compressing everything and bringing it in. I can bring his arm in more to where it's like this. You won't see this blue part. So like that. But and I kind of like it out. I kind of like it out more. So because this fist is so big, you you won't see this going to be a cup. This going to cover that up. That's going to cover that. It's kind of a get over, but I mean, if the position that you want, it's got to you have to do that. And then you have your your traps right here with your shoulder muscles which are this you have what did I do with my pen did I throw it back grab another let's see if this one works works good enough so you have your collarbone collarbone 
then you have your traps right here trap trap trapezius muscles and you have your neck right there so you're always going to have your trap so from the from the top let's go like this my neck is going to be here those trapezius muscles go right up the back of the neck and then it goes into the delts so if i if i did a quick real 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 real, real quick ink on this and i do mean really quick ink This is the palm, this is the other part of the palm. So you really, you may know the, the, the size of the fist. You may see just a little bit underneath that. So here's my head, my head is down. So I'm gonna bring the eye down. It's kind of looking at you, but it's still going down. My traps right here, my collarbone right here, collarbone right here. And this is gonna be my, my delt right here, a little bit of that uh, trap. So this is going to be pulled back when you, you can't see me, but if I pull my arm back, my, this, this is going to go back just a little bit. So that goes into the chest, goes into the other chest, which is like right up here, it separates there. So you're going to see some of that lat right here, which is like under the arm. Uh, here's this going back, just a little piece, Add some shape to that. This is the leg. This is just, just a little part of the other leg. Now, I can put a foot there, but it would take away from this, you know, it's almost like he's on the ground running. You know, so I'm not, I wouldn't do that. Like I said, there's so many little tweaks you can do with every um, action pose that it's just, you know, sky's the limit. So it was it was something I was going to say or do before I end this, and I just don't remember. It just it just it just left my head. So yeah, I guess I'll, maybe I'll cut it. Let me let me stop it and maybe I'll come back and I'll figure out what I was going to say. I, I haven't remembered so, but, but let me say this: when I said about bringing stuff closer and and bringing it in and then tilting it. I could have drew the same position like this. Just a quick, just a quick position, just quick. So by this being tilted, it gives a little more action than this. That's why you tilt your fist. I'm not gonna tilt the fist. The fist is gonna be just straight, straight out like that. Straight down. Now you can kind of see the difference. That's more of a hardcore because he is tilted. I mean, even if I do, you know, do a better job of, of drawing this. You can still see that <clears throat> there's more action when you tilt your character. see some of that on so that's just a couple things to just to look out for when you're drawing try to tilt it bring your stuff in don't don't have his leg like way out like that unless it's like a slow flight and if he's fly, flying slow then you can do that but once you start with that speed everything kind of narrows in it's like if you're running you don't run with your arms out you pull those arms in and you start running I think this is what I was gonna say I was gonna show you the big guy How's this position? I don't even know if he's gonna be able to get in this position. Okay, straight up and down, turning it, turning it. Remember I said, you're gonna not see all of this as he just, as he goes up, camera, this camera. I think my stand is loose and it's just tilting the camera. So you're not gonna see, you know, the stomach because, you know, and it's gonna be shorter. The legs are long, legs are getting shorter, 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 where you don't even see the legs control this. This one is bent like this. I don't know if it's gonna stay. This arm is going back, and this is a good thing to have. Um, except the one bad thing, as I say, this chest is, moves up. When you put this arm up, so this chest stays in that shape, 
and it's not supposed to it's supposed to go up like that that i say that would be my only complaint about you know trying to use this in a, in a pose and then of course this is like not really co correctly correct so i'm trying to get this pose and then, and then um for you guys bring it in so it would look something how do i have this so i guess i should put his head on i can't i don't know where his head is right now it is something like that bring this arm out a little bit more but you can't see the foot you just see part of the leg part of that leg it's hard for me to get this camera right if i can let's just bend that up so you can see it pretty much like that now if i can put it closer i can't really see it because it's blocking the fish should get bigger and you see how, how less you see of the arm because that fist is going to lock it off how much of that arm it, it blocks off so you see a little bit I can't get exact the exact pose because yeah so for shortening just the shapes, learning the shapes, and then learning to twist the shapes. So the cylinder represents the arms and the legs. So you just draw that every day over and over and over. That becomes the easy part. That becomes easy. I think that probably is the hardest part of drawing because these shapes here are just <clears throat> simple. These are the simple shapes right there. This is just this. This is all this is. This is just a hockey puck or tuna can as I call it. And then this is just the upside down house. And that's one of the first things we draw when we're young. We draw a house, door, and a couple windows. And you just flip it upside down. Put a leg here, leave some space here, put a leg there. You've got, you know, your hips and your legs, which are just cylinders. It's, it's really simple to draw when you have the right teacher teaching you. And remember I said it's, it's going to come up like this. Wherever you put your front circle, you can put it over to the side, and I can just do another uh, cylinder like this. Like he is, you know, I don't know what that position would be. Taking his foot out to the side. Probably would see that a little better if I erase this. Kicking that foot out to the side. Same thing here, if I bring this up, the back circle, my front circle, bring it back, and then again, circle, front circle, back circle. Like that, so just work with those cylinders and then same thing with your arms. And it just becomes easy. Put your put your arm on the ball, whatever. Front circle, back circle, front circle, back circle, and then your fist. And of course, like I said, your fist can cover up a lot of um, a lot of stuff, a lot of drawing. So again, circle. Bring this in. And as I say, the, the, the torso and this is the simple part. It's just how you want to do the legs, especially if you're foreshortening. All right, 59 minutes, 16 seconds, minus my cuts. That's going to be it. So hopefully you guys learned something. Go back and watch it again. Subscribe if you are liking it. I never, I never say that. Everybody's like, subscribe. As soon as the video comes on, you don't even know what the video is about. So subscribe. If you're liking any of this stuff, subscribe and leave a, a thumbs up. And as I say always, tell a friend, tell somebody that I've got some good teaching going on here. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep drawing. And don't forget, if you're not following your dream, you're just following the crowd. And they're going to lead you nowhere. All right, later.